Hey guys, Ken here with Yarbo. Um, so we wanted to do this question and answer session to clear up any questions that you guys had that maybe weren't 100% clear um, or you know maybe we needed clarification on. So let's get into some of the questions and get you some answers. So the first question we have is, uh, will the snowblower have an adjustment for gravel and a packed stone so driveway? It should be absolutely fine for a gravel driveway. And y Yarbo's S1 front end is like a typical, think of it as a mini two-stage snowblower. So just like you would you know, raise the snowshoes up on a two-stage snowblower, let the, let the ground freeze for like maybe an inch uh, of packed snow above your gravel driveway so you kind of have a working area where you're not going to dig into gravel. Um, you would treat the Yarbo in the same exact way, uh, no different there. So it can handle gravel, it can handle stone packed driveway, that's not a problem. Um, so let's go on to the next one. Uh, can I be confident that I don't need to shovel my driveway given non-extreme weather with my Yarbo? Uh, yes, absolutely. That is the entire point of Yarbo. Um, so what we basically say with all of its modules and capabilities, both now and, and coming in the future, is that it should be able to do the job of a human 90% um, you know, or better. And the simple fact is, is because it's able to micromanage things and constantly go out and address the snow and not let it build up, not get a frozen layer on the ground, uh, you know, is there going to be areas that are maybe smaller than the Yarbo that you can't get into? Maybe, um, sure, that you're gonna have to take a shovel, but you would have to with a normal snowblower anyways that can't fit in there. Um, other than that, uh, you can always remote control it if you want to get into tight, tight areas or areas that you know will have absolutely no GPS coverage um, that are very you know, tight areas. Other than that though, you should not require uh, a shovel, right? If you have steps you have to go up, obviously you'll need a shovel there. But that's about it. Um, let's see. So, okay, I read somewhere in a post that even though Yarbo should not work in a gravel court uh, or gravel driveway, uh, it should still work. So just to clear that up, yes, it can work in a, in a gravel driveway. Not a problem. So the next one. Lithium-ion batteries are not recommended for use below 32 degrees. How does Yarbo handle this? So that's a really good question. That was actually one of the big kind of uh, proof of concepts we wanted to do with the Snowbot S1 beta. In our previous video, we kind of explained that. But we wanted to make sure that the video could, uh, the, the video, I'm sorry, that the battery could work well outside in the elements for extended periods of time. And the way that works is that there is obviously insulation in the battery, but there is heater cores woven, uh, woven throughout the battery. Just like if you had an EV car like a Tesla and it's gonna have a heating and cooling mechanism, uh, Yarbo's battery does the same exact thing. So Yarbo can stay outside for um, you know, probably about two weeks under its own power and manage the battery, not a problem. But that's the biggest reason also that we include a wireless charging pad. So it takes very little power to run the heat, um, but that allows it to always manage its battery uh, itself by constantly having just a, a tiny power source to pull on when it needs to. So, um, so the batteries are perfectly fine in, uh, in below, uh, below 32 degrees, obviously freezing, uh, well below that. So uh, what are the safety features of Yarbo? So Yarbo has uh, a couple different safety features. So one of them being the millimeter wave radar, which is behind this panel. Um, Millimeter wave radar and a specific type of millimeter wave radar is the only type of uh, sensor that we found that could actually see in the snow. It's not affected by snow. It actually pretty much ignores it. So um, that is why we're able to detect things both in the snow and when it's snowing. Um, we do have a camera obviously built in. We do have a heated element there. There is also physical bumpers on the unit. Those are only really uh, to use if you're manually controlling it and you run it into something, uh, it will trigger that and, and stop it. Other than that, the millimeter, wa the millimeter wave radar is what's sensing moving objects, still objects, anything that's you know uh, below the snow, that type of thing. And the other important side to this is because the unit is going out all of the time, right? And theoretically, you should never really have three or four inches on the driveway. If you have eight inches, a foot, that's fine too. 
but the chances of something hiding under the snow is a lot less. Again, it has the sensor, it has the capability to see it, but just by that own way of functioning, uh, it's a little bit less complicated to manage. So I hope that answers uh, that question. And as far as it just says, the question was Yarbo in general. Uh, they all have millimeter wave sensors built in, but as we're developing the M1, uh, this might have bumpers added to it. It might also have ultrasonic sensors added to it. The same thing with the blower. And that's one thing that's nice. Uh, we have a lot of communication going on between the modules and the main body. So we have a lot of room to expand with different sensors as we develop new modules and those different sensors are needed. So we're not married to only using what millimeter wave radar and that has its benefits because it's not necessarily millimeter wave radar could be used all season. But there are instances where we might want to use a cheaper version to keep the module cost down. Um, and obviously put that into other aspects of the module that, you know, that particular cost or just have a lower cost so that we can offer a more uh, price competitive module. So that's, that's another uh, kind of positive there. So let's jump on to another question. So can Yarbo deal with snow and grass in different areas? And I assume this question is directed at uh, snow blowing specifically. So, and the answer to that is, is yes. Uh, you can use obviously uh, Yarbo on a driveway, not a problem. Different types of driveways, not a problem. The way that it works on a driveway, and I'll just jump into this really quick, it's not a question, but something I think should be addressed. When you're driving Yarbo around your driveway, you are, the idea is that you are raising and lowering the front of Yarbo to always get the closest to the ground as possible without hitting the actual pavement or gravel or whatever it is. And the reason for that is with traditional snowshoes on a two-stage snowblower, you're raising that snowblower up to the highest point uh, of whatever unlevel part of your driveway is so that you're always assured it will never hit that high point. The downside to that is that Yarbo, not Yarbo, a traditional two-stage snowblower will never get to the bottom, bottom of your driveway uh, in a setup like that. So without adjusting those snowshoes again, because we can dynamically adjust this and it's recording that input on the map, that's a really nice feature because it's the opposite. You're always getting as low to the driveway as possible uh, in any given part of the driveway. So even on a high point, you're still getting as close to that high point as possible. And it's, again, it's recording that as you're making the map. So it's not magic. It's basically just taking your input and remembering it and using that in different areas of the driveway. So, uh, and then for the grass, you know, I, I have uh, two Bernice Mountain Dogs, a lot of members on the team have pets. Uh, I always clear uh, an area uh, for my dogs to, to go to the bathroom. They're big dogs, but it doesn't matter if it's three or four inches, they don't want to walk in it, you know. Um, they'll play in it, but for whatever reason. So uh, you can absolutely clear an area in the grass, that's not a problem. If you had paths or walkways, you can do that. You know, you want to obviously make sure that um, well, we actually had this question too, can it go through like uh, dog waste and things like that? It's like any other snowblower. Can it? Yes. Should it? That's up to you. You're going to end up with a snowy snow uh, a smelly snowblower, but it can do it. Um, so let's go on to the next question. So what are the power wiring requirements for the RTK base station and the antenna above? So the power and wiring, it's simply just a 12 volt plug that plugs into the wall. I think you guys can actually, this question might have come before the RTK setup video, but it's just a, a little 12 volt plug that you plug into a regular uh, outlet. And then you're going power over ethernet. So it's an ethernet cord, it doesn't carry internet, it just carries um, power. So it's just one wire up to the little plastic Yarbo station. And then from there, you're going out with a wire to your antenna. And that, that wire is extremely small. It's, uh, it's even thinner than, than this wire, a standard USB cell phone wire. So, um, and, and that's it. Um, so it's very, very simple. How close to the edge does the M1 cut? Uh, very good question. And I know this actually has been asked of the um, Yarbo S1 as well, but this really goes for anything that the snowblower is attached, uh, anything that the Yarbo main body is attached to. Uh, it can achieve one millimeter accuracy, no problem. Um, so you can go right up to the edge of places. Where you have a fence that's under a really covered area, right? Even for this, let, let's talk about the snowblower first. 
you want to leave a few inches of margin just in, just in case the Yarbo slips a little bit, right? If Yarbo slips a little bit, just like a snowblower might slip a little bit, you know, you don't want to be um, a millimeter away from your, or a centimeter away from your car, right? Because it could slide into your car realistically. Um, you know, keeping a foot around your car like you would do with a two-stage snowblower, same idea. If you're manually controlling it, you can obviously be as aggressive as you want. That's up to you, you're in control. Um, as far as this, the lawn goes, I know people are asking with the M1, you know, why didn't we go right up to the edge? The important part, and you can see this, is that the lawnmower sticks out uh, a good amount more than the single stage, uh, than the, I'm sorry, uh, two-stage S1 snowblower. And we're running off the um, S1's algorithms right now. So because of that, when we, we don't want to get right up to the edge because it is still, this unit is still in testing and the dimensions are not configured for this unit. When this eventually goes line by line uh, and it will have other patterns you can choose from, like a ring pattern, the first thing it's going to do is go out and cut the edging of your lawn. If you have a concrete patio and you want to ride, say, the lawn and the, um, like half on the lawn, half on the concrete patio so you don't have to uh, trim there, you can absolutely do that. If you have cobblestone and you want to get right over the cobblestone, you can do that. These cutting blades extend the slightest bit wider than the tracks of the Arbo. So um, that's actually a nice feature because you can get right up to the edge. Uh, some of our competitors have, or I would say maybe not direct competitors, but other autonomous lawnmowers have their cutting disc directed over the middle of the unit. And one of the, the not so great parts of that, or the, one of the disadvantages of that, is that because it's in the center of the unit, it is never gonna get very close to the edge, um, maybe, in, maybe if you're going straight, but when you make turns, it's always gonna be somewhat away um, from the edge you're, you're coming up to and, and corners for that example, uh, or for, for, for an example, where the M1 can get you know, right into those places, which is nice. Uh, so we'll go on to the, the next one. Uh, so just, just to answer that, you, you can go to the edge as aggressively as you want. Again, if you're going by a fence, um, just, you know, in, in that respect, we will give you guidance, you know, maybe leave, uh, you know, two or three inches or something like that next to the fence, but we will give you uh, guidance on that in those scenarios. Uh, and you can also adjust the map later on. So if you want to start off fairly close to the, the fence or maybe six inches away from it and get close to it, uh, I have a fence at my home, so I am maybe more aggressive. I try and do the least amount of work. Uh, I figure if it's going to be working autonomously, let it, let it do it the best it can. Um, so I don't have to do trimming and things like that. So you can use your, your own discretion there. But um, all right, so the next question, does every tree require a no-go zone like a robot vacuum? Can it learn big objects to avoid by bumping into them? All right, so does every tree require a no-go zone? Uh, right now, with our current so software, yes. That's also because, again, this unit is in development. Um, it's not finalized. We're playing with sensors. We have the time to do that. We, want, we knew we wanted to do that. Uh, so we make no-go zones. Whether this unit has millimeter wave radar or ultrasonic sensors, can it go around a tree? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it, can, it will be able to detect that and go around it. The place where you want to be careful and maybe add a no-go zone is if you have large roots. And when I say large roots, I mean roots that maybe are taller than the, the intake end on the front of the Arbo. So maybe in that case, if you had a root that was say four inches around the tree, you would wanna make a small no-go zone, maybe not around the entire tree, but around that root, right? If you had a pool that Arbo can't see, you obviously wanna make uh, a no-go zone around that area because that might be within your map. So that's important. Um, so in the future, when we have like a surveillance camera uh, and things of that nature, um, that surveillance camera is really just a high-end edge device uh, that does some of the processing on the unit, react, um, and classify many more things and also get the depth of objects. So that would be an eventual add-on to the unit. There is a, a concept video of that that will be an, uh, an eventual add-on. And when that's added on, that, that will add additional functionality to any module that you, that you have on the Yarbo because it is on the main body. It's not a specific 
uh, add on to a specific module. So uh, that will give us some more flexibility. Um, so that's important. So what occurrences will cause M1 to abort operation and require human intervention? So that's a good question. Um, let's, let's talk about really, because it, the main body is, is, so to speak, gonna act the same, whether it's an M1 or a snowblower within reason for this question. Yarbo will stop whenever it cannot find a path to the next waypoint. So if for some reason uh, you park your cars blocking one half of the driveway that Yarbo is supposed to get to, and it now knows that cars are in that area, um, or let's say it's the snowblower and a tree falls for some reason and it doesn't know about it and it goes out and it can't get to the other side of your lawn, it is gonna stop and it is gonna alert you and say, hey, I do not have a path to get around this area um, instead of maybe like another type of autonomous machine, lawnmower or whatever may have you, where it'll just continually bump into the machine and bump, uh, sorry, bump into the object and bump into the object without notifying you. The other instance where it would require human intervention is if, let's say, um, there's a, a decent ride height on this, but let's say for some reason you have a very big, again, maybe a root or maybe um, a rock and Yarbo high centers itself on it for some reason. Uh, maybe you left something out you know, in the yard um, that Yarbo wasn't able to see or was below the grass line, something like that, and you high center itself. If Yarbo knows that the, its motors are turning, but the GPS data is saying that Yarbo is not going anywhere, the assumption is Yarbo's stuck. Uh, the same thing for the snow, right? So um, in that case, it will alert you. The first thing it's gonna do though is to go into like an unstuck mode, for lack of a better term, where it's gonna move the treads back and forth and try and free itself. But after a certain amount of time, it's gonna essentially time out and say, hey, I need help, I can't move. Uh, another situation where Yarbo would obviously notify you and need intervention if someone picks up Yarbo. And now we know that the motors are not running, uh, so it shouldn't be going anywhere. And it's now being moved, it could be uh, potentially being stolen, so we're gonna look at the angle it's being picked up, how quickly it's being picked up, and are we getting a GPS signal? If we are, uh, if the motors aren't moving and we know that the unit's actually moving because of the IMU or GPS, either one, we're going to send you an alert, probably send off an alarm in that respect, or we would, uh, that would be more of like an anti-theft feature than, than the Yarbo getting stuck. Um, so that's, that's important, and of course if that happens, you will know uh, that Yarbo has been picked up, number one. If it leaves your property, you'll know that by geofencing, and you'll be able to track it down. Um, but again, it's a fairly heavy unit. So, um, All right, so let's go to the next one. So how will backers get any potential hardware updates in the future? So it's uh, a good question. So hardware updates... Hardware updates, I'm guessing they mean, impro uh, not improvements, but I guess upgrades. Uh, that would be through a dealer. If they're items or accessories that we can ship you that you could plug in yourselves, we can do that as well. Um, as far as, uh, uh, yeah, hardware updates, I mean, that's really it. If we had a part that we found um, that maybe was, you know, had a failure rate that we weren't happy with, we would you know, obviously design a better part. When that part breaks, we would replace it for you um, with the better part. So, um, so that's important. Uh, let's see here, pros and cons of wireless charging uh, versus wired charging and battery health. So one of the great things with, with Yarbo and uh, the team took a lot of time with this is that wireless charging actually charges at the same rate as wired charging. And there is no and just to, just to talk about that for a second, that's a pretty big accomplishment because if you take a typical cell phone uh, like this and you plug it in, uh, this will charge at 15 watts is what this pixel is able to do and it's charging right now. Uh, if uh, from the, the batter, the, excuse me, uh, Yarbo power station. If you were to take that same charger or uh, same phone and plug it into a wireless charger, it's only gonna charge at five or 10 watts. There are phones that can do faster, but wiring is almost never the same. Wired charging is almost never the same as wireless charging. So with the Yarbo, it is. So you don't lose any time by charging wirelessly. As far as the health of the battery, the health of the battery is the same because it's being charged exactly the same way. Uh, the, you, the battery itself does not care 
how it takes in voltage or amps, uh, as long as it's not taking in too much well, or a higher voltage than it's designed for and too many amps at a time than it's, than it's designed for. So, um, all right. So are there any pending chip shortages that will impact delivery? There are no pending chip shortages. Uh, Yarbo, the main body, uh, again, and the S1 have been in production uh, for quite a while. Um, so there's no, there's nothing as far as the chip shortage that would, uh, you know, potentially delay us. The only thing I will speak to there is that obviously, and you've probably seen this everywhere, is that COVID is still very real in China. Um, you know, we, we've been pretty lucky thus far. So, you know, that's the only thing, you know, that is kind of an unknown, but again, seem, you know, so far things are on track. So that's really good news. Okay, for these next few questions, uh, we're actually gonna jump into a, another area to show you some things uh, on a shared screen to just better explain these questions. So we'll see you in a minute. Hey guys, so some of your biggest questions we felt were better answered uh, by explaining it visually and kind of drawing it out for you um, because just some of them are, are quite hard to explain. And although we've released some videos uh, that showed the app and how to map things, we want to show you um, probably some of the most popular questions. We want to sh visually show you uh, and explain them to you. So uh, the first question here that we have, which is probably the biggest one, is how does the snowblower know? How does the S1 know where to blow the snow? And how does it know um, where to blow the leaves? Do you have to program it uh, to map the areas? So in that respect, yes, you do have to map it. Um, I think you guys have seen with the M1 um, and just the app in general that you drive it around the outside of your driveway. But let's just take a very simple scenario. So if we just say that we're gonna take just a standard rectangle driveway and at the top, let's put uh, just some garage doors, excuse the, the bad drawing and handwriting, hold on, um, I'll just put G for garage and let's put R for road. So if you simply wanted to tell all, to tell Yarbo to do this driveway and then throw all the snow to the right, to the left and all the snow to the right, um, the first thing you're going to do is drive Yarbo around the perimeter, right? So you'll drive him around the perimeter and that will be his map. Um, that will tell him never leave that, that area, by the way, this would be, let's say area one, let's call it, uh, area one. Okay. Um, then, um, then all you're going to do is, and this is how it basically looks in the app. The app's going to ask you, where do you want to throw the snow? And you just drag with your finger in one area, two areas, three areas, wherever you want the snow to go. So in this case, if we just said throw the snow along this edge, the left edge, and the right edge, uh, all Yarbo is going to do is essentially divide your driveway in half. And it's going to do that by just, let's actually go this way. It's going to basically go this way, this way, this way, just like you would with your own snowblower. Um, very, this is a very basic use case. And it's going to direct the snow, let's say, this way for this side of the driveway. On the other side, it is essentially gonna do the same thing. So let's say we had a dividing line here. This is still all area one. So you can choose anywhere to throw the snow within this area. Um, but again, after it's done here, it's gonna come here and it's gonna start to work in that same pattern, throwing snow over here and 
now you end up with snow thrown to the left and snow thrown to the right. Um, let's pick something a, a little different. So let's say that instead of doing it like this, let's start with, um, let's see, we'll get rid of some of this. Okay, Do area one, oops. Okay, we're gonna do, again, we're gonna make this area one. And now we're gonna make, I'm not sure what that little line is, area one, and we're gonna make a second area. And that area, say, is just a walkway up to your house. And that's gonna be, uh, let's call this, area two. All right, so in this case, we probably do not want to throw snow in this area, but we don't want to make it a no-go zone. So in that particular case, we're going to ask Yarbo to throw snow, let's say in area two, we want to throw it here and we want to throw it here, okay? In area one, maybe we only want to throw it, uh, let's say, here. And let's say we want to throw it, whoop, sorry about that, hang on one second, let me get rid of that, okay. And let's say here, we want to throw this snow this way and then on this side, we still want to throw it this way. All right, so the way Yarbo is going to approach that is similar to, we ha to how we had it before, but not, not the same because it's treating both areas separately. So um, the first thing it's going to do in this case is we don't want to throw snow here, right? So when Yarbo creates its algorithm, it is going to go this way and throw the snow like this. It can, now it can move this way or this way, it doesn't matter. But the first thing it's gonna do is throw all of it uh, in this direction. So the, the best way actually to show that is probably a little bit more, okay, like this. So regardless of whether it goes this way, back and forth, uh, or if it was to go this way, which would just be more efficient, it is gonna be throwing the snow this way. Um, get the arrow here in this direction. Um, when it gets down to here, it's still going to throw the snow in this direction. For here, it's going to go like this and throw the snow this way. Uh, and then here, It is going to go through here. And throw the snow this way. Now again, whether it chooses left or right to go or up or down, um, that's in the algorithm. We try and choose the most efficient way, but just the way I'm doing this now, kind of ad hoc. Um, if I don't get my paths left and right or up or down correct, I hope you understand the, just the general concept. So then at this point, again, it's going to work the same way and divide the area essentially in two spots like it did before. And it's going to throw the snow let's 
say it's going to go this way for half, right? And it's actually moving, I should just say, in this direction, right to left. Um, well, it's moving up and down, but the first pass is going to be here. The second pass is going to work its way over to the left and throw the snow in that direction. Um, and then on this side, it's going to do the same thing. So if we took something like this and we just said it's going to start here, go this way, through its passes, and it's going to throw the snow over in that area. Okay, so let's take another example of how Yarbo knows where to throw the snow. So something a little bit more complicated might be like an oval or a, or a half circle driveway. So if we were to take something like that, and again, don't mind my drawing, but if we said it was something to this effect, um, and actually if we do that, we have to get rid of say part of this. And let's say we had a run, well, Let's keep it simple first. So let's just say that we had this and all we want to do is throw the snow in the middle. So if we want the snow to end up, let's say where this orange mark is, um, all we're going to do is highlight the inside of the circle. like so. And then when it throws its snow, it's going to go in a methodical pattern all the way around and back again. Sorry for the over exaggerated lines. Right. And while Yarbo is moving one way, the chute is constantly moving in this direction to throw the snow at the inside here. And you can also uh, set the shoot angles at different points. So that's really important. Um, so it'll throw it higher and you could set the designated shoot angle when you get to the actual inside here. Um, because you might want to, for whatever reason, maybe it wasn't here. Maybe you were throwing the snow to the outside here and you have a neighbor here, so maybe you want to turn the chute down uh, drastically over here. Maybe you want it to be like 45 uh, degrees down angle at this chute. So that's one way to do it. Again, if you were to take for some reason the other side of things and you made a line all the way on the outside, now Yarbo is going to just split up this area um, and basically go down the middle and on one side he's going to throw snow this way and another it's going to go this way. So, um, so that's a, another scenario. Now let's take maybe something a little bit different again. Let's say for whatever reason, um, let's get rid of this all together. And we'll give you another example. So let's say that we just, again, we have a standard driveway. And again, the, the shape really does not matter to Yarbo. Um, with our S1 beta, it mattered very much. But with Yarbo's new algorithm, your driveway can literally be any shape and you can pick anywhere you want to throw the snow and it will uh, figure out how, how to get that done. So um, in this case, if we wanted to throw the snow for some reason, again, let's just say that there's a garage up, uh, let's say there is no garage here, right? Let's say that um, your driveway is actually shaped completely just uh, on its side. So let's do this. Um, hang on one sec. Okay, let's just say it, it is this way for some reason. And now maybe your walkway is this way. Right, so you could designate that area two if you want. This could be area one. Um, but let's say that you want to throw your snow into this corner and this corner, right? And here you want to do it this way and you want to do it this way. 
So Yorbo is essentially going to cut your driveway diagonally and it's going to break it up into two parts and it's going to continually, we have a different color, go this way and then this way and it's going to keep going until it gets to here, in which case it's going to now throw snow. Obviously here it's going this way, here it's going this way, and as it gets here, it's going here and here and here. And one of the reasons that this works and wouldn't work with a traditional snowblower or would, but with some ca a lot of caveats, is that in order for this to work and be manageable, Yarbo has to constantly be going out and maintaining the snow. Because if you try and do this with a, you know, a foot of snow, um, can you, you know, Yarbo is powerful enough to do that. But one of the things is, is that if you're continually doing this and you have a very large area, right, it's much better to move two or three inches of snow at a time, because even if that compounds up to nine inches, it's still not a big deal for Yarbo to handle. But if you waited until after the storm and now you're throwing a foot of snow, again, can you do it? Yes, but you might, if you have a very, very wide area, very wide area, and you're asking Yarbo to go from one side to the other, um, he's gonna take that, divide it, and if you have, say, I mean, just a, a really wide area that's maybe, I don't know, uh, 200 feet wide, right? Yarbo is gonna have to throw a foot of snow across that. So with that side of things, right now we keep the auger at full speed, but really we're programming it to be intelligent so that the further away it is from your boundary, the harder it's gonna throw the snow. The closer it gets to your boundary, the more it's gonna shoot down the angle if you want it to, you can change these settings. But if for some reason you want to throw it all the way back here, you can do that. But if you don't, um, and you, you, know, you really would like it to end up here, the auger can be turned, programmed to turn down as you get closer to your boundaries. So, but again, a big reason this all works is because um, the unit is constantly maintaining your driveway and constantly going out and clearing the snow so it does not build up to an unmanageable amount like a traditional snowblower. And again, the lawnmower is really working in the same way. The leaf blower is working in the same way. So the algorithms for the leaf blower actually work very similar with the caveat that the leaf blower uh, actually turns its power down a bit because we want finite control with blowing leaves. They're very light. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how many passes Yarbo needs to make to blow leaves in a certain direction because it's a robot. So where you might go out and want a really powerful blower to get all of the leaves over from one side of the driveway to the other in the shortest amount of time, Yarbo doesn't care. So he would rather make much smaller passes at a lower uh, blowing power. So that way it's a controlled uh, blowing direction of the leaves. And, you know, he's not just going to blow leaves all over the place because we've had that question uh, a lot. People don't quite understand how that would work. And if you pictured using your blower on low and taking your time and really making individual piles if you wanted to, that is basically what Yarbo can do, whether it's debris, leaves, um, you know, sawdust, uh, you know, maybe sand you want to get off the driveway, whatever it is. And it could be as complicated as you want to make it, um, you know, as far as where to, where to send these things. Uh, the other thing we could talk about quick is no-go zones because that seems to be a, a big uh, question. So, uh, and again, as far as the snowblower goes uh, and the um, blower, there is no limit to how many areas you can pick. Yarbo, Yarbo's job is to figure out where it needs to move in order to get the snow that it needs to get to in the quickest amount of time, uh, or the most efficient amount of time, I should say, while not piling the snow up in any given area. So it's, and again, I really applaud the team for the work on the algorithm, um, the controls, because it's not, it's not a simple thing to do. So, um, 
All right, so let's do something very simple. Let's demonstrate what a no-go zone would be. So whether it's a driveway or a yard, let's say you park your car um, here. All right, so this is your car. Uh, quite simply, you're going to drive the Yarbo around your car and make this all a no-go zone. Yarbo is not gonna not gonna go into it. Um, if it's something like a car, though, Yarbo can go around it. But the reason why at this stage, and uh, you know, when we're shipping the Yarbo, we have two goals here. The first one, let's call it version one, is a realistic way to handle this scenario. And what we would basically want to do is. If you know you're going to park here, and you can do this remotely, you don't have to be by the Yarbo, you could do it, you know, streaming the camera and doing it in your driveway. But what you basically want to do is make a no-go zone here, and instead of putting the snow, you know, all the way down this line, you want to edit that snow area. So all that means is come in here and get rid of throwing snow there. All right, so it's just going to be an area that you do not want to throw snow. Um, so you can either do it like this, um, or you can also edit the map to simply go around it instead of a no-go zone. It depends where the, where the car is located. If the car is in the middle of the driveway, then uh, you want to do a no-go zone and just choose not to throw snow there. Um, Version two of what we actually want to do is something called a no-throw zone. So a no-throw zone would be indicated by something a bit different, and it would say, all right, um, Yarbo, when you're working, I want you to never throw snow in this area, or maybe it's even, and I hope you can see the yellow, but around this area. And Yarbo will intelligently navigate uh, around this area, moving the snow so that it is blowing it around. Now, that is not something that, uh, that we feel we'll have ready at launch, but we want to have it this winter. Um, so that's why we kind of have two ways, really three ways to module it, uh, to, to attack this. One is, no-go zone. One is simply changing the map. The first thing, again, I just, sorry, I should mention is just changing where you're throwing the snow. Um, so, and really, again, we want to have no throw zones because that's a really efficient, easy way to say, hey, never throw snow here. Uh, just like a no-go zone, but really specifically for a shoot. And I, and I will say this, you know, this has been in development since 2017. Um, we've tried to think of everything we could. We have got a lot of really good suggestions from you guys. Uh, so if you have any suggestions for us, I think you guys know with our beta uh, program, you know, we are an open book, um, or at least we try to be, and we try to be as receptive as feed to feedback uh, as possible. And a lot of people, be it through the, the backers on Kickstarter, uh, or through the Facebook group, have really had a lot of good suggestions along the way that are really software-based, that which we would we would love to build into Yarbo. Um, this is really scratching the surface of what Yarbo will be able to do, but we also want to be realistic with our expectation in what Yarbo can do. You know, this this winter. So, um, so that's important. So let me let me check another question here. So we have, um, what are the pros and cons of a base station? Uh, or a base station list setup. So base station versus no base station and using like third party corrections. So base station, I think you guys all know from the RTK base station setup, that simply allows you to have a base station at your house. That base station never moves. Um, you know, in those scenarios, you can even get better than a, a centimeter accuracy. You could get millimeter accuracy if your base station is there right by the Yarbo and never moving. Um, the alternative to that is using like a, an N-trip network, which is basically a network of base stations that you can work off of, and they will send you corrections. So like in, in the States, uh, in New York where we are, they offer a free N-trip service. We just put in what's called a mount point, a username and password, and an address into the app, and it automatically connects us with their network. 
So let's just go over the, the pros and cons to, uh, to having a base station or not. So let's take the base station first. If you do a base station, and let's just say that your base is B here, and your house is here. Uh, you can take your Yorbo and save maps within a 12 mile uh, radius. So this way, this way, uh, and it will work and have really good accuracy, no problem. Um, the further you go outside of the 12 miles, the less and less accurate accuracy you're gonna have, it's gonna degrade. So that's, that's important. A pro is that if this base station is in the same exact spot on your roof, uh, let's, it doesn't have to be on your roof, but let's say it is, that's really the best place to get an open view of the sky. Um, you can really get up to, you know, uh, one, uh, you know, millimeter accuracy, right? Okay, so that's, that's the base station end of it. That's, that's a plus to it. The con to it, and again, it doesn't, if you're only intending to use Yarbo at your house and you can switch at any time, um, then you could do this setup and that's probably the, the best thing to do. Uh, if you have friends that you wanna use it at 12 miles, you know, within 12 miles away from your house, you could bring it there, it'll work no problem. Let's talk about using a third party service, uh, whether it's free or paid and, and, and how the pros and cons to that are. So. Okay, so for the lawnmower, uh, whether it's the lawnmower or snowblower, it doesn't matter, but let's like take Florida as, as an example. So let's say Florida offered end trip, I'm not sure if they do, but kinda sorta looks like a boot. Um, if your home is, let's say down here, home, and you have end trip service throughout Florida that Florida either offers for free or maybe you pay a monthly fee, whatever, whatever it may be, you'll have to check out either your country or your state or province. Um, then you, you would have, if you're going into an end trip network, you would have base stations all across the state. Um, and each one of these base stations is broadcasting a signal. And what Yarbo is going to do, the advantage there is that you can actually take Yarbo within any one of these areas. Um, not, well, not any one of these areas, anywhere in the state, because they're close enough to be, you know, 12 miles apart. They can even actually be further than that because it's triangulating almost like a, a cell phone towers or GPS, uh, how that actually uh, works. It's actually triangulating your position, but because of that, if you know this was 12 miles out, let's just say 12 miles out, put you here, right? But we want to go all the way up here, which is maybe I don't know a couple hundred miles, right? You can actually bring Yarbo up here. You could bring him maybe over here to your parents' house. It doesn't matter, and Yarbo will always have a connection. So you can actually save a map up here, a map over here, um, and again. So an, an end trip service, a lot of times commercial guys like to use it because they want to save maps all over the place. They don't want to set up base stations. We've tried to really make the base station a very easy setup, uh, you know, both in simplicity of hardware, uh, you know, voltage requirements, very simple, one cable. But in a setup like this, if you wanted to go like here, if we want to go anywhere in New York State, we don't need a base station. Um, the downside is that you might get when you, you know, uh, it throughout this network, you know, one centimeter to three centimeter accuracy. Um, one centimeter can absolutely be achieved, but getting down to like millimeter accuracy is not something that you're gonna find um, with an end trip service. So that's important. Another side to it is end trip, like any other service, could, you know, have issues where. If a base station goes down, it's not a big deal. If they have to restart a server, you could be down for maybe five minutes, something like that. Um, not too big of a deal. If you do a paid subscription, um, you know, with an end trip service, which we are not, um, then obviously they guarantee uptimes and things like that. If it's free, they're still usually pretty good, but again, it's free. 
So I think uh, those are the main questions. I think we have one more. So it says, does Yarbo uh, have to have Wi-Fi on the property? Explain the pros and cons of each. I think they're comparing that to 4G. So um, Yarbo does not have to have Wi-Fi. It either needs some kind of internet connection, so either Wi-Fi or 4G. Uh, the benefit to Wi-Fi is that you could stream as much video as you want. You can, um, you know, consume as much data as you want. But if you are talking acres of land, um, it can be difficult to, I mean, I should say this. It's not difficult, but it could be pricey to spread Wi-Fi reliably across that type of area. So in that case, 4G is a really good fit. Uh, and again, we include, you know, the five years um, of connectivity there. Um, if you do want to stream video, you can either do like a, you know, a, a higher plan in that respect, um, or you can have the video go over Wi-Fi, which is pretty cool. So you could use 4G for your connectivity and video over, uh, over Wi-Fi so you can, you know, keep the same free um, 4G connectivity that we have, which is pretty cool. Um, so I think that is it. I'm going to check one thing here. Yeah, and, uh, and that'll do it for the questions, uh, at least here. So thank you guys, see you in a minute. All right guys, so that'll do it for our Q&A uh, questions and answers. Uh, I hope we answered all of your questions thoroughly. Sorry if certain parts were a bit boring. We just wanted to get you know, as detailed as we could with some of our responses. And if you have any other questions at all, please you know, feel free to ask. We do try and get to everyone's questions. Um, you know, as soon as we read them and, uh, and we just want to thank you guys again for your support. It's been a, an amazing ride so far and we can't wait for you guys to get Yarbo, uh, in your hands this winter.